Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. You can thank a viewer, his name is David, for the inspiration for this particular video. I got a, a lovely email from David. Now, David's been a viewer of Above Life Channel for some time. You know, we've been here almost for three years now as I'm recording this in February of 2021. And I recognized his name when he sent me the email. So I wanted to share this with you because you guys have no idea how incredible this divine timing was. This email arrived to me uh, on a day when I was really feeling really kind of down, really low and really questioning, what, do, what am I doing here? Like, what is the purpose here? Have I lost sight of the purpose for the work that I do and the meaning that I do, um, uh, that I can share, you know, the change I can make for people, the inspiration I can share. Am I, is it Above Life Channel really the place where I should be channeling my inspiration or is Fairy Grasshopper or what does that look like? And so I was really questioning and I have been um, for some time. And when I got this, it just really affirmed to me so much how much this channel actually means to so many of you and it gave me a boost of inspiration and David also actually asks a question and so I'm going to respond to that question here and it's a question about religion and being psychic so some of you can very very much relate to this all right so I did ask permission from David to share his email so I'm just going to share parts of it not the whole thing because um, I, I don't want to share all the details of his life, etc. Um, David writes to us from the United Kingdom, and he shares that he and his husband and their dog, he's got a dog, he's a dog lover too, um, enjoy uh, the Above Life channel videos and also Fairy Grasshopper. So thank you for watching both. I appreciate that. David shares that um, I, I was diagnosed with metabolic bowel and liver cancer. Presently, I'm on a palliative care pathway. Doctors aren't sure how much long I've got left. It could be months or years. No one really knows. I was able to watch as much TV as I wanted after having been diagnosed with cancer as I'm no longer able to work. So he's talking about how he's been, you know, using Above Life Channel to help keep him inspired. And then he talks about his psychic experiences. So I want to share this part with you. So number one, thank you, David, for being the inspiration behind this video, this question and question answer response video, and for giving me the inspiration to want to film a video. Okay, so you gave me inspiration, so I'm returning that. So it's a give and receive and lovely balance. So thank you. So everybody pay attention to this part now. All right. From about the age of nine or 10, I've seen things visually, both tangible and in my mind's eye. I simply went with it as I matured and I found that I was able to communicate with the departed. This becomes a little too much after I, after I nearly died, having a large, sarcoma growing in my small bowel and more recently spending six weeks in intensive care fighting for the fight of my life developing a real bad case of the current virus oh my gosh oh my gosh i type this email and i have a spirit trying to reach out to me how do i stop this i've gotten I've got to concentrate on my health and getting better. I must admit that sometimes I can't switch off, block spirit out, as it seems like they're like a dog on a bone sometimes. So how do you switch off your communication or connection with spirit? If you're very extreme, a super extremely psychic, especially right now, this is really common with those who are clairsentient or empathic. If you're empathic, you're empathic, Feelings, maybe on sky high, just red alert, super hot, at the surface, hard on your sleeve, but in a really like just forceful kind of push, push, just 
way, is that a good description? I'm so, I'm so eloquent, I'm very articulate today. And that's totally normal, whatever normal is for, for now. It's that everyone's psychic ability, psychicness is super enhanced right now. And I feel like it's because we're collectively experiencing moving through a time that is unprecedented and that there is a common grid of suffering. There's a common web of connection that has to do with suffering. It's suffering. It's, and it's other times in history might come forward, other experiences you've had in past lives could come forward just and mix in with all these emotions. And then this empathy, 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 this energy feels overwhelming, not just like it used to feel overwhelming, it feels almost overpowering. So let's remind everyone that you have power. You are at choice. You are always at choice. It feels like you're not at choice, but not be feeling at choice, that's a choice as well. Being reminded of where your tiny little bit of wiggle room is, where your tiny little bit of inspiration is, and receiving it, and using it, and harnessing it in ways that are positive, helpful, and hopeful. Positive, helpful, and hopeful. And so in the most common way right now, we're feeling empathically. Everybody's emotions are heightened. Everything on the earth is amplified. And because of that, it's happening for a purpose, a reason to be able to be clear. You gotta be clear. You have a choice to make, you have a decision to make. There's clarity here, there's the opportunity. I don't want this, well that's really a strong decision. I don't want this. So I'm gonna look for other opportunities. Again, things that are positive, healthy, helpful, hopeful for you. Those are the kinds of things that, that you want to have clarity on, right? The things that are, are feeling good for you or help you feel better, help you feel uplifted, help you feel more inspired and empowered. Not like you're less than, you're not good enough, you don't, you don't have what it takes because clearly you're overwhelmed with emotions. Well, you should be overwhelmed with emotions. It means you care. Congratulations, you are actually a person that has a heart. Oh my goodness. And all these years when you built these shields and protective walls around your heart, guess what? Right here, right now is an opportunity to build healthy boundaries, not a shield where you totally detach, but healthy boundaries where you can connect and be connected in healthy ways. So when you feel overwhelmed with spiritual energy, it is a bit of an amplification of your own spirit wanting your help, wanting you to notice, wanting your attention. Your spirit, your spirit, just like dead people, that spirit, your spirit, you have that. You have the the uh, connection and the attachments and the opportunity to know that, to channel your wisdom, to channel the spirit of you, whether the spirit is in a body or not is irrelevant when it comes to psychic connection. So feeling like other spirits are just bothering you or, or coming into your space and wanting your attention, it's because a part of you has called them in. They don't just randomly show up, not that often, maybe, 5% of the time, maybe 4% of the time, like we're talking a little bit of time, they would just randomly show up. Usually there's a pre-agreed to interconnection or a pre-agreed to or a request that you've made, whether you know it or not, consciously, you've made a request. You've asked for help. You've probably asked in prayer, in meditation, in your dream state, in your journal, in a random conversation you had with that doctor maybe. You asked for some help and here comes help. They're responding to your request, whether you're conscious of it or not. It's not just like they randomly show up again. I want to be really clear on that. It feels like that, but that's not the case. More often than not, like 96% of the time, that is not what happens. That is not, it just isn't. I have been working as a psychic and medium, specifically medium, working with the afterlife for what, 17 years now? Yeah, and prior to that, I've had paranormal experiences with disembodied spirits, with ghosts growing up from the age of like four on. So I think I'm pretty well versed in a lot of stuff, scary stuff, spooky stuff, connected to stuff that I know of, connected to stuff I have no idea what it is, that kind of, you name it. I've been a clear, I've been a healer, I've facilitated healing, facilitated clearing, I should say that. And so let's just be honest, identify this energy, this feeling of spirits bothering me because you've asked for help, so you need to receive it. If it feels annoying or if it feels like it comes at uh, inopportune times, you can set boundaries, healthy boundaries on when you want to receive information, communication. I do it. 
I do it all the time. Sometimes I inadvertently ask for a spirit to come when I'm like, I think about something and I'm like, oh, I should talk to so-and-so, I should talk to Prince, I should talk to Freddie Mercury. And all of a sudden I see their image of them like responding to me, like coming right into the kitchen. Usually it's when I'm doing mundane tasks like making dinner, for example, and boom, they're there. Or if I hear a song, like I'm playing it on the Bluetooth speaker, you know, in the kitchen and I hear a song and all of a sudden I think about that person and think, oh, have I channeled them? Oh, maybe I have it. Maybe I should. And then all of a sudden, boom, I see a response. I get an instant response. And so, too, this is happening to you. And so then what you do is you say, oh, wow, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Let's check in on this later. I'm not feeling up to doing this right now. I would like to check on this later. Thank you. Thank you. Have gratitude and reschedule. You have control of your time, of your schedule. In the spirit connection realm, you have that control too. Doesn't feel like it, because it feels like push, push, pressure, pressure. I should do this now because why? Because it's not gonna last very long. They might leave and never come back and that kind of thing. That's a brain thing. That's totally a mind thing. That's not a spirit thing, okay? So let's be clear, it's not a spirit thing, all right? So, so you have total choice over this, okay, my friends? You can reschedule, ask them to come back at a more convenient time. You can always ask for a spirit guide to come in and help you like an archangel. I find Archangel Michael is fabulous for protection, for creating safe and healthy boundaries for yourself. I also find that there are other archangels like Archangel Gabriel, who's a great communicator. There are also lots of other deities, saints, god, goddess aspects like Thoth from the Egyptian um, God, goddess aspects, who also help with communication and writing, for example. And so you can you can ask for assistance specifically from these other other spirit guides that you you trust and and you utilize as almost a buffer a gatekeeper a receptionist <laughs> a screener a pre-screener and then they can interact with the spirit that you've called in or that is present with you okay even if it's your grandma whatever Ask Archangel Michael to keep her entertained until you're able to speak with her. And guess what? It's not a time thing. So the time is in the mind. So it could be three weeks or three months from now and you can revisit. And boom, connection. Okay? So let's be clear. Spirits don't usually just drop by for a visit. You've called them somehow. You've either listened to something that, it, that has opened up a portal, which is like making a phone call to somebody, or you've, um, you have an image in your mind or something that triggers a, a memory that reminds you of some, such, such and such person or a song for like a, a, or a movie or something like that or a TV show that you saw this person, that kind of thing. That's how they come in. They're, they're like being called. They're responding to a request, again, whether you're conscious of it or not. So you're asking for them to come in. But you can also take charge of that situation and have a spirit guide like Archangel Michael or Archangel um, Gabriel. Those are my two that I find are great with communication connection, Gabriel and Michael protection, helping you feel safe, helping you have healthy boundaries, that kind of thing. All right. So there you go. There's that. And then so there you go. All right, there's that. And then the next question you ask about, we talk about religion. You ask about religion, spirituality, religion, psychicness. That's one that's a hot topic, I think, for people. This is going to resonate with many. So thank you, David, for asking. Um, let's see. Okay, I have his email up on my computer here, but it's not uh, moving for me here. All right. Back in 2018, when I received my diagnosis, the wonderful Freddie Mercury, I'm wearing red. Hello. Freddie reminds me of red. So it's perfect. I also had to put like this uh, really cool flower of life. See that sacred geometry shape on there? Um, scarf on because I had it handy and I'm cold. It's freezing in here. You might actually hear the furnace, the little heater, because it's like negative 25 degrees here and there's like windows all up and around me. So it's cold here in Minnesota right now. So I needed to be bundled up, so I'm cozy. So Freddie Mercury color, red. So he says, all right, so with the wonderful Freddie Mercury, he made himself um, known to me, but prior to this, I, I knew who he was vaguely, but but that, and I can't read the rest of it because I can't see it, like that he wasn't a fan, a big mega fan or anything like that before. 
Let's see. Um, but since that time, he's watched a lot of videos about him, watched his concerts, that kind of a thing. I became an expert on everything Freddie and Queen, he says. Does that sound familiar to many of you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does, no matter who it is, whether it's Freddie Mercury, Prince, David Bowie, whoever your um, uh, spiritual um, um, fandom <laughs> resides with. All right, so let's see. We've also got, he says, um, I embraced him and I received healing from him, which is common. That can happen 100%. You're not making it up. If you think you're making it up, then you're dismissing a beautiful gift and a beautiful connection. The, the psychic work, I've said this a thousand times and I will say it a bazillion times more, okay? It's not for just special people that were chosen, the privileged ones who are psychic. Everyone is psychic. And this last year should have raised your awareness on that, especially if you're freaking out emotionally. It's because you're very, very in tune to the energy. It's not just a brain thing, my friends. It's a spirit thing. So let's start working with what we've got, what we've been gifted. All right. So let's get to the point here. But this is where I get confused. Um, being a psychic medium is, no, is a big no-no when it comes to religion. And I should not be taking part in any of this according to religion. So as you can see, I'm torn in between my psychic abilities and, and the religious teachings that I was brought up in. What am I to do? So... This is a great question. This is a personal question for many of you, and it, and it requires a personal response, a, a customized response. It's different for everyone. How you choose to view your belief system is from your mind. And how your mind chooses to frame this conversation of psychic versus religion or spirituality with um, perhaps many different God, goddess aspects, deities versus one God concept of uh, like a, a one God religion, etc. It It is very deeply personal and I want to say that I respect that. I respect that 100%. And in fact, interestingly, I, I've had multiple questions about this over time. It's kind of, um, I think, faded because people kind of know where I'm at now. If you watch Above Life Channel, if you actually watch it and you're not just like a passerby, if you're here enough to kind of know and get to know me as a person, you know that um, people in the beginning um, made this assumption that like I didn't believe in God or that I've somehow like overcome traditional religious dogma. And, and I want to be really clear that... Uh, Although I wasn't re raised in like going to church every Sunday, I went to church with my grandparents, Lutheran. So that's part of Christianity. So that's my frame of reference. Like I'm not, I don't have, that's what frame of reference I grew up in. But I never really um, felt like I belonged in any one particular religion or church. I did have an experience with a... It was a Methodist church growing up that was um, difficult for me. I had I went um, with some friends to a Methodist church and had an experience there that I should actually maybe talk about in another video. I might do that. That might be a good idea. It, it was um, a, a very stressful experience for me, and I felt... Um, Okay, well, let me just tell you. I'll tell you the deal. So I wore pants, and that's a big no-no. It was at least when I was in fourth grade and wearing pants, and I was so proud of how pretty I looked. I thought I looked so nice with my nice pretty blouse and my fancy dress pants. I thought I was look like a great lady. And uh, according to that particular religion at that time, you couldn't like be this flag bearer or be this person up at the front. And I was so excited being there. It was really cool. It was a fun place. There's a lot of kids there. It was like almost like a Sunday school thing. And I raised my hand to volunteer to be one of the people up in the front. And so I went up in the front and then it became this big deal. People started pointing at me and saying out loud, she can't do that. She can't be that. She has pants. She's wearing pants like it's against the rules. I had no idea. I had no idea I was in fourth grade. What's that, 10 or 11? Yeah, like 10 years old, 9, 10. It's actually 9, 10. Um, yeah, that really turned me off. Let's, let's just say I never went back to that church again. Uh, I know that that was one sliver of experience, but I actually wrote about it in one of my college courses um, when I was working um, in my uh, 
um, coursework on education. I wrote about that experience that I had and trying to kind of form, um, inform my values and beliefs about things in general. And um, so, yeah, that was, that was pretty traumatic for me. And yet at the same time, I, I didn't really feel like, um, I always believed that there was a God or a source, a creator, a universe. I always was protected. I always felt protected. I always felt protected. I had all these weird experiences growing up, many, too many to recount. And I was always protected. I always felt like nothing horrible would happen to me. Like I wasn't going to be like killed or anything like that. Like I just always felt protected. And, and it wasn't because I was learned it from the church or from other people. It's just because I think I had this part of me, my soul part that believed in greater than myself and my human body and my human experience just believed that. And that, that was never a question. It wasn't something that was developed in me. It just, I just have it. I have that feeling. And so you'll hear me say in my videos, creator, source, universe, God, goddess, cosmic consciousness, so that it covers the wide range. I believe that we are greater than ourselves. And to me, that's spirit. We are all spirit. Spirit happens to be living in the body right now. But when my body dies, my spirit will not. It will continue. It will be connected to a one source, a one form of energy, and then it will come back around and I will inhabit another body, maybe another type of body on a different planet, at a different place, um, in a different form, whatever it might be, but it'll be life and experiencing life because I like the adventure, you know, so I'm going to reincarnate as many times as I can. So that's my experience about religion and to share too that in, as far as spirituality goes, I never really had that, um, had to make a choice myself. So I don't know how to give advice or guidance on making a choice. And, and to me, it's always this and. It's never separate. If it's separate, it's not a good thing. Where's the unity? Where's the harmony? Where's the room for different opinions, different viewpoints, different values, different, that's where we learn and grow in the space in between. So if it's only one way and no other way, what that is is that's, that's something that you are accepting because it feels comfortable for you and maybe it's safe for you. And if you are, that's okay. That's okay. Your beliefs, values, that's okay. That's your choice. And that's okay because I have talked with so many people that have had um, con conflicts like this. Oh my gosh, I'm talking to a psychic. Is that bad? It, you know, is that anti-religious? Is Jesus going to be mad at me? I talk to Jesus people. Like I've channeled Jesus, Mother Mary, you name it, in for small groups and and in in my other on my on my other channel and things. And and so it's because my life channel isn't about that particular. Thing. It's more about the human connection. Although Jesus, well, yes, was a real person. Let's just be clear on that. Jesus was a real person. And we all have healing. We are all part of that oneness, however it looks to you and whatever. There's many faces of God. There's many interpretations of, of, of prophets, of healers. Of I mean, there's many faces. There's many faces. There's many faces. And so it doesn't have to be religion or spirituality. It, it can be both. You can be in both. And if you are channeling or connecting and it's so sweet and it makes you feel this just incredible, like when you pray and you get cry, like I always cry when I know I make contact, like I'm praying, I can feel it because I cry or my heart just gets really warm and feels really, really big. And I just feel it and sometimes goosebumps and I just feel it so much, that gift. That's not fake. I'm not making that up. That's real. That's what you call faith. That's what you call believing in something greater than yourself. That's what you call hope. That's what you call love. That's what you call light. That's connection. However you get it, right? Whether you get it from a traditional religion or you get it from, from a combination of experiences that you've had and beliefs that you have. Like, I'm a hodgepodge. I'm a quilt right now. I like some of the pagan practices. I feel connected to some of the um, teachers from Christianity. Uh, some, of the, um, some of the other types of religions, I feel like Judaism, I feel a connection to that for sure. And some of it's from past life stuff and experiences. Celtic shamanism, strong connection to that. And, and, and 
did I say pagan? I think I did, because very earthy, very connected. Like, lo there's lots of different things. Like, I'm a quilt, right? And a tapestry, right? And so are you, but you maybe don't really know that or realize it, and that's okay. You don't have to have any kind of, like, aha moment or massive experience to shift you. There's no, there's n none of that. It's, it's very interpersonal. It's very, um, how do I say this? It's very personal. It's personal. So that's just something you come to terms with on your own, you know? You choose to receive it or to reject it, and that's your choice. And I'm nobody to tell you what's right or wrong in that regard, okay? Just be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the challenge for us in our humanity is trusting ourselves and the instincts that we have, the intuitions we have, the part of us that is God. It's hard to believe because we seem so imperfect, but that's the point. A piece of God within us, a piece of universe within us, stars within us, earth within us. I mean, we just, we have so much that is untapped capacity. That is intuition, my friends, and that is psychic connection. And that is why um, you get frustrated because you can't connect. Because there's some other stuff in the way of that. One of which are limiting beliefs or value systems, which might be well-meaning and might exist for a purpose and might be there to protect you and that's okay you can work with that it's not about destroying things clearing everything out to get clarity it's about understanding what's already there and the layers that's already there and the purpose of what's already there and then building on that that's what growth is isn't that what growth is like think personal development isn't that what growth is you build upon you build upon mm -hmm. think about the education system you build upon you build upon mm -hmm. Consider this, David, my friend, as your internship now, especially because you have your lifespan and you're really very aware of your own mortality timeline um, in your palliative care state that you're in. I, I think now is absolutely the time for you to be asking some of these questions, these deeper questions, and, and maybe to grab out a journal and explore some of these things. You might not find answers but you might come to a place of understanding where you can find compassion for yourself and peace and maybe even gratitude for the process, for this journey. All right. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Dash. Thanks so much for watching Above Life Channel. So for the rest of you, thank David for giving Bridget inspiration. Because without David, you might not be seeing videos on Above Life Channel for weeks or maybe even months. So thank you, David. Thank you for reaching out. You have no idea the difference you made. You have no idea. All of the viewers at Above Life Channel should be putting in the comments, thank you, David, and wishing you well and sending you healing vibes. Thank you. Thanks, my friends. All right, so this is Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit. Giving you some hope. Poured some hope in your cup today. Cheers. Poured some hope in your cup today. Mm-hmm. Remember, this is your life. It's yours. It's yours. You are the expert. You don't know that, but you are. So you got to live it. Live it to the best of your ability. Allow yourself room and space. Give yourself forgiveness. Give yourself compassion so you can grow. And I look forward to many more weeks of channeling now, now that I'm inspired to channel so much more because of this personal meaning and deeper connection. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you viewers here on Above Life Channel. I, I thank you very much for being here, being part of this crazy journey as well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>